Okay, thank you everybody uh, for coming for this. Um, uh, let me introduce, uh, this is the second of the Tech Talks, uh, Ben Tibbetts. Um, and Ben is uh, quite well known, well, was extremely well known, was much better known than most of us. Um, although he's talking about digital stuff today, he's also the author of uh, this awesome, awesome, awesome book here, Up and Glow. Uh, which you don't have it, uh, I ser seriously think you should look for it, um, which is, so he's, uh, he has a foot in uh, paper and, um, and, and tangible stuff. Uh, it's a fantastic book, that. But today he's going to talk about uh, mountaineering in the digital age. The format of the talk is going to be a short presentation by Ben. I, I don't know how long he'll talk. It might be five minutes, it might be 10. Um, and you're uh, more than welcome. We are ex you're expected to put questions in. Um, if you can put the questions in the chat box, that would be great. And then I'll try to pick them up. And the reason I want them in chat box is that it's easier for me to make sure that we're not getting duplicate questions. And I'll look at the chat box and invite you to unmute yourself and talk. Uh, otherwise, please stay muted if you can. Uh, after the after Ben's presentation and the question and answer session, uh, you're welcome to stay on for another for another fifteen minutes or or however long it takes. Talk amongst ourselves uh, on on this Zoom room. And finally, there'll be a. Um, I, I would like. Uh, I, I hope this works. Uh, we'll we'll have a a WhatsApp group, uh, same as the group from last week. Um, and Michael put it up in the chat box if it's not already up there. Uh, and you're more than welcome to, you're invited to join the uh, WhatsApp group after the talk. So we can try to keep this conversation going if possible. Um, so please stay muted until you're invited to unmute yourself. And after you've asked your question, if you finish talking to mute yourself again. Um, I think that's all I've got to say about that. Uh, ben, would you like to introduce yourself and talk and what you're going to do? Uh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so Victor tasked me with this. Um, uh, <laughs> mountaineering in a digital age. Um, so I'm just going to, I definitely don't pre uh, pretend to have any particular knowledge in this sector uh, i was hoping to have misha gopal along who's the ceo of fat map um who does actually know about this kind of stuff so i'm going to just give a little overview of what i use uh, maybe why i use it i'll uh, probably lose my way and maybe victor can bring things back in order um but so yeah so Vic, victor's or somebody's written uh this will focus on the use of technology in the mountains asking how reasonable it is to rely on apps and gps for planning navigation and rescue so i'll, I'll try and cover that i um so yeah i definitely don't i don't have any particular authority on this um so we're we're, we're going to wing it um but generally um generally i spend a lot of time in the mountains and i'm working on guidebooks across the alps at the moment um i'm working on the follow-up to alpenglow which probably over the next 10 years i'm hoping to make three volumes the same size as that um that cover west central and east uh routes on peaks below 4000 meters so another 150 routes um and to that end this year i've done 33 major alpine routes that i've not done before um so though i don't know much specialist uh i don't have much specialist information on the apps and 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 this kind of thing um i do know what i use and i know why i use it um and i know what's available at the moment and what works and what doesn't um but generally i don't know if we actually need apps um to the same extent we we, we don't actually necessarily need 
guidebooks or maps or anything if 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 what we're trying to achieve in the mountains is to have an adventure uh and um find some kind of fulfillment or you know whatever whatever we do in the mountains actually you can just you can just go and do it without any apps anything like that and the weather will be what the weather will be and and you'll have an adventure and you'll probably be reasonably fulfilled um so where are we going um i i, I wonder um because obviously in the last 20 40 200 years we've gone from very rudimentary information to what's becoming reasonably precise information um and um i i, I guess um I guess we're we're heading to a kind of convergence point uh, where whereby information is is so precise that it's like it's sort of like uh, Lewis Carroll's fictional map that was a, a scale of one mile to one mile, um, and 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 once he said, has it ever been spread out? The farmers objective ejected. They said it would cover the whole country and shut out the sunlight. So now we use the country itself as its own map. And I assure you, it does nearly as well. <laughs> um, so, yeah, uh, obviously, we, we're we heading towards the possibility of having such minute information of routes that are so much beta that you know where every hold is and... Um, I kind of feel though that we're 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 at a, maybe at a golden age where we've got a, a sort of sweet spot of information where and and tools and equipment where even like most of us not not just elite people but like all of us um in the kind of the middle swathes um and there's a lot of elites in this valley of Chamonix, and I'm definitely not one of them. Um, um, all, all of us kind of normal people have have beautiful technology, lots of information, and we can go and safely have an adventure at whatever level we want um, and, and get back down. And, you know, sure, you could do this 30 years ago. Uh, the equipment was way heavier. Um, the weather forecasts were less reliable. Um, and, and we're definitely progressing towards more and more precise information. And I wonder if in 30 years' time you could have such precise information that some of the adventures we appreciate it now starts to become eroded. Maybe not. That, that'd be an interesting point for discussion later on. Um, and hopefully, hopefully, I'm not the youngest person. Hopefully, somebody else can give a different generational point of view on this. Um, so, I guess what did this? This came out of uh, me admitting to Victor that I don't think I've carried a paper map for like a couple of years now. Um, or at least I definitely don't systematically, and I haven't done for probably five years, haven't systematically carried them out. Sometimes I do, um, but generally it, it used to be a sort of a point of ritual to 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 definitely have the map. Now I don't, and I, maybe that's particularly in the Alps because actually in technical terrain, the map isn't that useful. The map kind of, gets you into the adventure uh and gets you out um but actually in the technical terrain you're kind of you're you're navigating you're micro navigating and route finding um and usually before i leave for any adventure i definitely spend a lot of time looking at a map you can see a hot map of the whole of pennine alps at one fifty thousand above me a little bit shrunk um and i use uh, several different apps to plan um and in the mountains um yeah i don't i don't bring a paper map so that's a, maybe a, a, a foolish admission um but so generally what um different uh, groups of information do we get nowadays from apps or 
or from paper um, or other sources. Um, and I think basically got four. We've got weather, um, avalanche, mapping, and guidebooks. Um, and so just very briefly, um, and I was just I was just kind of tossing up what I use, and it's it it seems kind of unsurprising actually, but almost surprising that actually the the best of all of these uh, are, are are more or less Swiss. Um, so in terms of weather, um, I haven't been in the UK for quite a while, so I don't know what's going on in the UK. But in the Alps, um, basically, Meteor Swiss is the kind of the bar by by which I'd measure any other app um, for its um, well all kinds of things. Um, principally, it's got a, a a rain radar, a forecasted radar of precipitation, which is incredibly useful. Um, if yeah, I, I assume most of you have been in the Alps recently and do use it, but you can choose any mountain any summit any point any locality and put it into into a box uh and then and then select this and you can you can do all kinds of things um it gives you both forecasts of maximum and minimum expected precipitation or cloud cover or it just it, it does pretty much everything you can imagine um and it basically uh french uh meteo france is woeful uh meteo italy don't even know if that exists but there's lots of regional things meteo blue i guess a lot of us use meteo blue um for everywhere that isn't switzerland um so i you know I, uh, when you're up in a refuge you still listen to the the weather on on the on the tv maybe or the radio or the guardian gives it to you if you don't have any uh connection to your phone but i would bet that almost everyone in this meeting uses uh their phone apps for for the weather um so it's not very controversial um avalanche forecasts um Sure, they're pinned up at the trailheads in paper forms. They're pinned up at the Office de Montagne in Chamonix. They're pinned up here and there and the other. It, lots of places uh, in paper formats. But I'd also bet that most of us find them on the internet or on an app. Um, there's not much... Um, there's not many apps that conglomerate all this information across the Alps. At least I haven't found one. I'd love to know if there is one. Fat Maps actually working on that right now. Um, yeah, and again, uh, the Swiss White Risk app seems to uh, basically be considerably better than any other country's offering in this department. Um, so yeah, moving into slightly more controversial areas so mapping yeah so so I've, i don't carry a paper map i i would there's no reason i don't it's just um i found phones and a mixture of different apps to be so reliable that i haven't found them wanting and i haven't found my phone battery to die um at the wrong moment um ever uh, I generally carry a small spare backup battery. Um, even then, not always, but I've got quite a new phone. Um, so in terms of mapping, um, Fat Map is kind of the de facto leader um, at the moment, I think. I'd be interested to know if anyone else has got other ideas on that. Obviously, national... Um, mapping like swiss swiss map has a very good two-dimensional mapping service um and it's totally free nowadays um but fat map offers both 3d modeling um everything you'd want in 2d um and all the terrain 
analysis features that are useful, especially in winter for avalanche and stuff like that. So um, slope angles and aspects um, and yeah, so you can work out where cold snow might be hiding or where if the forecast tells you that above 2,200 meters on north northwest and northeast, you can even have it make a cult- custom filter to highlight those areas on your map. Um, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> moving on to guidebooks, and so all, all these things—they're basically just topics for discussion. I'm not—I'm not saying anything that anyone doesn't know. Um, but these are the kind of four groups. Um, the last one being guidebooks. Um, so I think guidebooks for the moment are what has what where there's the most space for development um, in terms of apps. Um, uh, it's a pretty complex field, and I think there's a, still a lot of room for paper guidebooks. Personally, uh, I've got floor to ceiling uh paper guidebooks i still buy paper guidebooks i still get most of my information from paper guidebooks um little by little moving towards using apps here and there um but yeah and and this is the kind of domain i work in um so i'll maybe just share screen briefly of um because we've, we've been oh, i've been looking at victor anyway i don't know if everyone else has um boom share is that working victor can you give me a thumbs up if that's working it's not working yet no no, no it's up yeah brilliant so I, th- I think we've been what we're looking at you victor for the last well i have anyway I mean, um, oh fuck oh well that's not that's uh, not don't worry no no that's not true because everybody else you you don't look at yourself so oh, okay. everybody else looks at you oh Oh, um, okay. So here is uh, another guidebook I'm working on at the moment is a um, guidebook version of the 4,000 meters. So a little bit like Alp and Globe, but a more like A5 format with um, a lot more routes than Alp and Globe. Alp and Globe was 50 routes. This is going to be about 130. Um, <clears throat> so just um so this is a paper guidebook this is a digital version of a paper guidebook um i'm talking about uh, getting into one to one so i'm well i've already actually put this on my website as a, a paid for download pdf which you can then put on your phone and take it with you up into the mountains and the, the beauty of this is if you've got a digital version you can do things like this, which you can't do on a paper book, obviously, because you this wouldn't even render on the highest resolution printer. Um, so here we're looking at the Hornley Ridge of the Matterhorn, and I've drawn a rather accurate uh, topo, which might or might not help one not get lost where one always gets lost um so this is this is kind of where i think um there is space for digital topos not only like i think this will be a beautiful thing as a paper topo and i think if you're at home you probably don't want to be looking at a tiny screen all the time because we spend enough time on tiny screens um so i think both have a place uh but i'm also looking at the possibility of making a small and rather basic app um because obviously pdfs on my site uh you could pay to download and then you can just share them with your friends um and this takes me an awful lot of time to to make so that's a privacy problem or a, a sharing problem um so making an app would solve that um, anyway, you get the idea. Um, being able to zoom in digitally allows you to see things 
on higher resolution photos that you can't otherwise. Um, so in, in terms of guidebook apps that are decent, um, again, it's the Swiss. Um, the Swiss Alpine Club has in the last few years been developing a very comprehensive app which integrates with the Swiss mapping um, and draws the sort of, um, if, if you haven't, I don't, I think maybe you need to be a member of the Swiss Alpine Club to, or or join and pay an annual subscription. Anyway, it's rather magnificent. It's obviously has a huge budget. Um, um yeah so it's got obviously all the text descriptions that you'd find in a normal paper book plus lots of photos that have been submitted by authors or professionals or whoever else uh, of the route um you can search the map by by summits and routes and this that and the other it's it's, it's generally very well executed um and yeah what one would expect from the swiss I haven't seen anything else like it. I'd love to know if there is anything else like it. There's lots of other apps for like rock climbing, um, most of which are pretty worthless. Uh, the one standard one is Rockfax actually has a decent uh, app that also has some alpine climbing on it. Um, be interesting to see where that goes. Um, yeah. Um, do I have? Yeah, I, I guess one thing Victor, Victor kind of hinted at was that maybe there should be an app that just does everything, um, you know, and, and that's where you go to find your weather and your avalanche forecast and your guidebooks and your maps. Um, and obviously this would, this would be nice and it'd be make life simple, but just from a simple economics point of view, I don't think such a thing will ever exist or not. I don't, I don't see why it would because these are all quite specialist domains um, and you only get the best of things when the market drives us towards it. Uh, like Meteor Blue has become rather good because it does one thing really quite well, and Fat Maps become rather good because it does one thing rather well. Um, I can't see Meteor Blue doing guidebooks very well. Um, yeah, I think that's the limit of what I have to say in in that on that front, um, and. I'd love to know what people think. I'll stop sharing this and go back to normal view. Um, yeah, I'd love to see what questions people have, what ideas people have. Um, yeah. Victor? Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Um, uh, that was... Uh, yeah, I, it did start with, uh, with a question. Yeah. Uh, last summer, I was working with Ben and... He, I was quite astonished. There's me, old school, putting my compass and my little fold-up map in the corner of my pocket, and Ben looking at me as if I'm something from a past age, uh, and telling me that he'd never. So this is what this is where I, it's all. I, I do this is, always. This, carry... this is where this this is where it all began. I do always carry a compass. I always have a physical compass. So. Um, well, I would really like it if 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 you put questions that you'd like to ask everybody, if you could put it in the uh, chat, um, I'd be very happy to uh, get you to talk about it. Um, meanwhile, um, yeah, the, the one thing that you that that then while we're waiting for questions to come up in the chat box, and please do that. I, I know that people are always a little bit hesitant to get started. Just just get over it and put in the questions. One of the things that you that you mentioned was, uh, uh, was uh, the the spirit of adventure in the mountains and, uh, and throwing away the guidebooks so that you get a, a nice spirit of adventure. Uh, I, I I don't know. This is a kind of uh, I, I I I don't know where this goes. It's um there there was George Finch who climbed uh, very high on Everest in 1922. 
uh, was in Corsica with his uh, friend Alfred. And they, um, they went to Corsica without any information whatsoever. Uh, they knew that they spoke French, that's all. And they went there and they, you know, climbed. They'd heard that there were some mountains to climb. And then they came away and uh, George Finch said, well, you know, it's, it's, you know, we might, we, we could have been credited with um, not only discovering new routes, but also discovering Corsica. The only difference between us discovering Corsica and Columbus discovering America is that Columbus didn't know that it had a name already. <laughs> so in, in a way, your, your, your ideas about sort of throwing away the guidebooks, it's, it's, it's a little bit like that. Anyway, um, so we've got some questions coming up in, in the chat. Um, and looking at it, I've got, um, <laughs> well, Michael wanted to put a question. Uh, Michael, would you want to put your question about the ritual? Sure. Um, so Ben, you're, you're about to go out on your day on the mountain, um, or maybe the night before, I don't know when, do you have a sort of ritual that you do to make sure that your apps are sort of preloaded and ready and you have the right bits of maps so that if you get out of coverage you lose it yes uh so um so i do have a, a redundancy um so i most of my mapping I, I do on fat map and you if you've got a paid subscription then you can download an offline um sections as much as you want actually as much as your internet connection on phone can handle um and you can choose whether you have just just the 3d model and satellite imagery winter or summer imagery and then you can add the national mapping on top of that the so ign or swiss top or whatever else so i have that um if i'm going into an area that also has swiss topo coverage i will download the same area on swiss topo in case one of the apps bug out which does happen um if i'm not in a swiss area then i'll usually download the same area on gaia um so you, i usually have redundancy in terms of maps um in terms of weather i i keep kind of updates well I, I look at it obviously for several days before the morning i'm leaving i usually screen grab the weather forecast as i'm leaving but then i'll carry on looking um and if i keep on having reception in the mountains i'll carry on looking in terms of guidebooks i i just have a massive database on my computer of pretty much every summit in the alps has a folder and i whenever i find information i dump it in that folder and then i have that folder offline on my on my phone um, and then avalanche, similar to weather, I'll I'll screen grab it um, mm. so that I've got that um, on my phone to if I need to refer back to it. But I'll be looking obviously at the avalanche forecast for several days before. Okay, um, thank. I think that may at David might. I think that might answer your question, which you asked about. Uh, uh, internet access on the hill uh, unless you want to put it uh, are you are you happy with with that answer by the way uh, well it, it seems as though uh, you do need internet access if you're wanting to do stuff live but if you've downloaded it beforehand then all well and good yep that assumes that your phone has got mega memory or whatever else yes this is this is the assumption yeah in 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 2022 i can basically store almost unlimited information on this on this phone and any phone 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 so for phone batteries for the first two three four years of their life are generally going to be reasonably good and then they drop off little by little after that depending on how you use your your phone and how how you recharge it and what make it is and stuff like that and you can replace the the battery on nearly every phone um whether it's viable to do so or not um but you know so on an iphone for instance it'll cost you like 60 to 80 euros to replace the battery and i definitely would do that after three or four years and it'll be like having a brand new phone again 
I usually carry a small battery that will do one charge as well. Um, Does it make a difference in terms of the apps, whether you have a, a an Android phone or a, an Apple? I afraid I have no idea. I've never had an Android. Um, I haven't had an Apple either. I, I'm I'm running a BlackBerry, but hey, yeah, yeah, no idea. I'm afraid. Um, I, I I obviously not all of them are available on Android, but I think most most of the useful ones are. But you use an Apple. Yes. Okay, but other phones Thank are available. Fine. Thank you. Thank you very much, David. Um, Carrie has got a question. Carrie, could you unmute and? Um, yes. Sure. Yeah, you're probably sick of my questions, actually. But um, <laughs> do you have any opinions on like crowdsourcing platforms for guidebooks? Like, do you use Camp to Camp or social media, or you know more than anybody on Camp to Camp? <laughs> no, Carrie, I don't know more than ever, ever, everybody on Camp to Camp. That's a, definitely no. I use Camp to Camp. Uh, is probably probably one of the first places I'll go uh, for information I, and I'll, I'll really dig deep. So obviously you've got the crowdsourced um, guidebook part, um, but then you've also got all the outings and any kind of complex route or route that I think I might put in my guidebook, um, I'll probably read at least the last 20 trip reports just to see if I can glean any bit of information. So when I say that, um, you know, may maybe we should all just throw it away and, and, and not have guidebooks and not have maps and just go for the adventure. I, I don't go for this and I'm heading more towards the sort of one-to-one -one model of the earth. Um, I, I like to have as much information. Valentin's looking at me. Go away um she's having her dinner or not um so um yeah i i like to have as much information as out there um so yeah i'll 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 use camp to camp um as much and sometimes i've even contacted somebody who's re written a trip report to ask them particular information that's getting a bit into the weeds um but yes definitely crowdsourcing very useful but it Obviously, the downside is, you know, unless it's a popular route, maybe the the description has been written by one person um, who may or may not be experienced and qualified enough to write a useful description. Usually, something's better than nothing. Um, I don't think I've ever had the experience where, no, no, I have had experience where I would have preferred to have zero information, actually. Um, um yeah um but generally generally more information sort of hones towards an established truth um i guess what i'm trying to do is something totally different and i I'm, I'm taking you what i've noticed when you're making guidebook or like especially when you're trying to draw a topo or something you can only do lightly better than the sum of all the information you had before so if you start with nothing you can do a kind of medium to crap job if you start with a a sort of a mediumly well drawn hand topo you can kind of probably work out where the route goes up the mountain and get up it and from that I'll, I'll mark on like ooh, that pitch was that grade and that was there and that was there and I'll, I'll 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 make the topper better if you start from a really detailed topo then you can add even more information on top of it so it, it's a kind of gradual accumulation of information a lot of the routes that i'm doing don't really have any topo at all so i'm doing the best i can but it won't be very good a lot of the routes I do, there's there's not even an entry on camp to camp or it'll be very scanty. Um, uh, but routes that do have quite a bit of information, I'll harvest as much of that as I can and try and make something a bit more definitive and put more time in than any one person on camp to camp might want to do to make something kind of good. Maybe that answers the question.
a bit long-winded, sorry. Yeah, thanks. Well, thanks, Kari. Uh, of course, um, ask any more questions. So do put in more questions. I know that you're always going to produce some interesting ones. Um, there's an interesting question here from Anton Odena. Anton, could you unmute yourself and ask your question? Hello. Um, yeah, uh, I just uh, want to make a point of, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, of uh, what Ben said about uh, an app who integrates uh, different like weather or cameras or, or routes. Like um, we develop an app that integrates all these uh, functions. And just to make a point that uh, we use, for example, YR, or we could uh, integrate uh, MetaBlue inside this app. Um, and because I think like most of the people who are not um, very used to go uh, to the mountains, uh, for example, it's super helpful to uh, get all this uh, information in uh, one single app. So uh, that's a point that uh, we realize um, in, in our company, for example. Yeah. Um... I'm embarrassed to say I've um, yeah not come across Moonpackers. Uh, I'll check it out. Um, no, no, we yeah. we are it's, uh, super small and just like um, uh, an app for Andorra. I don't know if you know Andorra, so okay. yeah, so it's super, super, super small. Yeah, can I can can I ask a question? Are you are you um, based in in Italy or some other? country or no, is your Andorra. Andorra. Mainly... Do, you, do you know Andorra I know where it is <laughs> yeah so uh, I'm, I'm based uh, in Andorra in the middle of the Pyrenees yeah and is, is your is your app mainly for the Pyrenees um, yeah we started here Andorra is a small country uh, based in the Pyrenees it has uh, mountains it's not uh, the Alps but uh, it's a small region where um, has more than eight million uh tourism uh and basically like mountains are uh super popular so we tested uh and we launched the app uh, in andorra because we are based in andorra but our idea is just start growing uh, across the pyrenees and why not uh in the alps um we are not that focused as a fadmap like super specific for pro uh people but uh, yeah, we are more for uh, normal or people who go for holidays or want to go for uh, a hike or or whatever. Oh, that's very interesting. Thank you. Well, I'll... Uh, Ed, I mean, um, did you want to say something, Ben, about that? No, 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 no. Um... So there's a, there's a, there's a Gus. Uh, Gus and Philip, Gus or Philip, yeah. you you yes. wanted to say put something. Gus, are you there? Yeah. Have you ever used um, the phone apps up on the AC site? Uh, is that a question to me? Um, yeah. I I've I've used phone apps. Oh, I I've, yes, I definitely I. Didn't remember where it was, but I definitely have used it. And yes, there's a, an incredible amount of work gone into it, Gus. So well done. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, you know ex exactly. Um, yeah, obviously, camp to camp is almost entirely in French, and some of it's in Italian. Um, uh, and if you don't speak French, then it's it's a little bit difficult to use. Um, and so, yeah, Gus has done a, a lot of work making a, some beautiful selections of routes there. Um, also, of note is Gulliver.it, um, which is kind of an Italian version of Camp to Camp. Um, it's not... Uh, it, it, yeah it, it's not quite as slick as camp to camp um but again it's a really useful source um which i i just use it on google chrome with the, like auto translate on I, I my italian's terrible um but i i usually find a lot of in, useful information there um 
I, 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 it, Gulliver's pretty. Me. Gulliver's pretty good for for cragging, isn't it? Compared to, I don't know. Um, I've, I've never used it for cragging. I've I've always used it for yeah, ex- yeah. extreme, like the most obscure routes that I can't find any hint of anywhere else, um, mm. except for the crusty old Club Alpine Italiano guidebooks. Um, that's where you'll usually find some note about pretty much every route under the sun. Um, yeah. And okay. Philip, um, Philip yeah. says worth mentioning Wimper. Yeah, of course, uh, Wimper um, is a relatively recent app, uh, which yeah has um, is an interesting integration between mapping and guide booking. And I, I is far as I understand, all, all the guidebook information comes via Camp to Camp. Maybe there's other stuff in with it um, that's been auto-translated into English. Um, the mapping is more basic than fat maps. Uh, I think it only has um, open street map based mapping. Uh, oh, no, it has IGN as well. Uh, no. Um, yeah, it, it, it's definitely trying to kind of integrate all these things. Um, and um, yeah, it's good. Yeah. Can I come back in? It's to really yeah. answer Carrie's question. And that is, um, I think things like um, Camp to Camp were a really great idea 10, 15 years ago. The idea of having a wiki style input but it's never really worked. And I think the future is uh, commercial apps. That's my own personal opinion. And why, why do you think that is, Guy? Uh, they just I mean, do Gus. not get the support. When uh, Chaminade uh, looked seriously to camp to camp, they had a stagiaire working the whole summer. They were not satisfied with the quality or the reliability of the information on it. Uh, and they thought it wasn't like a published guidebook. It was one person's memory of the route. Maybe they did. It wasn't reliable enough. So you're you're suggesting that you always needed a, tr- a trusted uh, person to oversee all the information. It, they do have moderators, but it's just in a volunteer's way. You cannot get enough effort into it. Sadly, yeah, it's just like the Alpine Club. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, I I think there there was one question from Richard Toon uh, that we missed higher up. I was um, yeah, I was just going to comment that uh, I found uh, Google Earth quite useful in uh, one or two places a bit more remote than the Alps. Uh, a couple of examples: uh, ski touring in northern Iceland, where we couldn't get maps, and uh, Google Earth was quite adequate for that. And then also in western Nepal in uh, part of Nepal where uh, it wasn't possible to get anything like decent maps. And Google Earth was perfectly adequate to get us to where we wanted to be. We didn't get up the mountain, but we certainly got uh, to and past the base camp, and it was perfectly adequate for that. So I thought I'd just mention that. Yeah, you have to to print it out or download it. Yeah, that's so Google Earth's support seems to have been uh diminished in the last sort of decade or so to the point that yeah there there doesn't seem to be any offlining function so i i kind of feel like fat maps succeeded google earth um for 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 most things like that because you can actually offline as much as you want on your phone and so you can actually use it for mapping with a Mm. gps um, which which is 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 highly valuable. It, it certainly, yeah. Ten years ago, Google, Google Map was about all there was for remote regions. Um, now, Fat Map generally has the same or similar satellite imagery for pretty much every everyone on, on the planet. Um, except you, or, or in addition to that, you've got a load of features like terrain analysis. So so you can tell how steep the slope is and and you can offline it on your phone so um mm. yeah i i st- sometimes sometimes you find a spot on fat map where the 
imagery is not good and sometimes it is better on google earth so i do do find myself using google earth once in a blue moon um yeah yeah um we've got a yeah a, we've, we've got a couple of questions from uh, michael who's uh, but before we do that i i just like to say that i i've also found gaia extremely useful out of europe i don't know if anybody else has used the guy have you used gaia um? As a, as a um, mapping thing? Yes, I, I use it as one of my kind of backup. Um, again, like, I kind of think fat maps better in almost every respect. Um, but Gaia is a useful backup. So, so fat map has essentially the same base map, um, just with a different styling on it. So an open street uh, map mapping as it's worldwide yeah. mapping um yeah. and yeah there's a few functionalities that gaia have got better than fat map at the moment fat map are working on um well i, I found i found gaia better in uh bolivia than uh okay. map yeah and uh and i was using fat map in nepal as well this year mm -hmm. um similar mapping cap it's fairly similar mapping capabilities to the maps on the inreach yeah yeah um yeah. i think i think uh michael uh delarue wanted to say yeah. something so I, michael, yeah, you... I have some things coming in from youtube um so phil Uzi, i guess um i was going specifically to fat map um saying he's found he's found that whenever he's using fat map it only has tracks but it doesn't show the marked trails um is that something is he is he missing something is there some way to show also official marked trails and things like that on the on fat maps uh yes um yes should we should probably get in touch with fat map to ask how you, how, how um but um let me just go so if i'm on for instance the global topo layer which is available all over the world then that that is just open street map essentially and so that should have all the mark trails if you even take that off and then you've just got the satellite imagery most all, all mark trails should be overlaid on top of the satellite imagery uh in summer terrain it's as kind of little green green paths or green dashes for four by four tracks um so it sh should be pretty easy to find that um but yeah um they do have all the mark trails on as far as i'm con I, I i guess i've only looked in the alps um Okay, and another comment from VC fifty seven UKI, um, which is uh, I find my camera on my phone absolutely wonderful for storing printed weather forecast, guidebook pages, sections of maps, all of the other stuff that you pick up as you go along. So uh, rely on map and compass, but use the the uh, camera on the phone just to get some stuff into there. Is that? Yep. Yep. Same. Yep. Okay. Cheers. Um, I think there's a question here from Simon Love uh, about the uh, about the 2018 uh, oat root accident. I'm not sure that really. Uh, uh, well, he, Simon, do you want to put your question? Simon. Uh, yeah. Hello. Um, I, I I just have a a, a lack of trust in the phone as the as a sole piece of technology to rely on, um, and if, if you aren't if you aren't backing up with a paper map, then perhaps a a sort of reliable GPS device um, would be safer than just a single phone. Yeah. Um, so so yeah to to yeah. Um, so I, I always do actually have an inReach um, as well as my phone. I've got an inReach, not that as a GPS in and of itself, it's particularly useful, but I can definitely 
uh, send an alert out and it will have a GPS point on it for emergency services. I also sh I, I should probably state quite clearly that I, in my planning phase, I memorize the map to a good enough degree that I think I can get off the mountain without a map anyway, because in complex terrain, a map is not that useful anyway, because they're not detailed enough for actual route finding in complex terrain. And it's certainly in the Alps, if you head down from almost any one point, you're going to hit a road eventually, as long as you can navigate down through the right rocky bars and this that, and the other. And that's kind of route finding that a map's not always going to help you with anyway. Um, in more complex, wilder environments, yes, I'd, I, I would have, like, in Greenland or Kyrgyzstan, the maps aren't very good anyway, but I'll, I'll definitely have laminated paper copies of them. And I'll probably have it within the team, you'll have several backed up devices. So even in the Alps, <clears throat> whoever I go with, I'll suggest that they download the, the maps on their phone as well. So you won't just be relying on one device. Okay. Right. okay. Thank you. That's Simon, I would like to say something about that. Um, you refer to the accident in 2018 on the Oat route um, going down to the Vignettes hut. And I disagree. I don't think that it was uh, that it was particularly the device of battery failure. I think it was a complete lack of preparation and, um, and, and a misunderstanding of. I mean, have you been have you been to that particular place where the accident happened? It's actually quite complex terrain. And, you know, you read you read through the the description of the accident and it was an accident waiting to happen yeah I, I, I mean i do wonder whether the there was false confidence based on the fact that they felt they had gps mapping and maybe they didn't do the preparation that they should have i mean or, or made a safer decision earlier in the day yeah i mean it's a it's actually you know you ski through that area in good weather and you don't notice how difficult it would be in bad weather uh, and I, I just think that they, the, the, the mistakes they made were actually much, much earlier than just, uh, you know, they, I don't know. I mean, what do you think, Ben, about that particular accident? Well, I think what the, the, the last, what you just said applies to pretty much anywhere in the mountains. You go through it in broad daylight in good weather and often you don't notice how complex terrain is um and when it, when the weather does come in like I, it was around the serpentine wasn't it that 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 accident like i don't think oh, no 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 it wasn't the, no it wasn't the serpentine it was going down from the uh it was going down towards the vignettes it was oh, on was the other that, side was, of the yeah 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 it was yeah down, uh, yeah there's down the like, peen, from from the summit of the peen going down to the vignettes there's that yeah. That's, okay, and, so and, and you had left, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, you, you know, well, you'll have seen, you know, even in good weather, you look around, and you realize I wouldn't want to be there in bad weather without having a really, really good idea of what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, 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 I think, think they, just, they, I, they just, they just didn't understand. I think they just didn't understand the seriousness of it when they set out. Yeah, but I, I think that kind of, yeah, that's a more global question, and I think most terrain in bad weather becomes very serious there's not <laughs> there's, there's not there's not there's not much terrain that is benign in bad weather yeah. um and a map or not you you yeah. need to have a pretty clear idea of where you're trying to go um and yeah. what you're doing and what you're doing out in that weather um um all right i uh i think we with uh, 9 30 um Maybe we could finish off with a question from Alan Socroft, um, and then we let Ben go and have his dinner. Alan? Um, yeah, there? yeah, with a, um, more an observation um, rather than a question, Vic. Um, like a lot of people, I use Strava um, you know, on an almost daily basis for cycling, running, whatever. But the root builder within that allows you to follow the most popular tracks. Uh, and it really is quite extraordinary. 
if you look around, you know, particularly like the Chamonix area, you'll see, you know, on the murder glass, where everybody goes, you'll see, you know, where everyone else has been. So even when there aren't paths marked on maps, um, but, you know, the route builder stuff gives you kind of a heat map of where everybody else goes. Um, and presuming most of those are doing it in good weather, it gives you a pretty good idea um, where the main um, places are to go. Very, very pertinent, Alan. Yes, and and Harry might buy the head off here, but that that feature is coming. Um, Fat Maps been developing a feature based on that information. Um, I don't know when it's live, but they're working on on using that, so you can then so you can look at that in real time on in Fat Map as well. Um, I don't know where. Oh, that's... What? Are they going to link that up with Strava? You know, I think the beauty of Strava... Using, yeah, use, using that data, yeah. Yeah, because, you know, it's obviously got millions of users. Yeah, exactly, it's got way more users, so it's, it's a very useful data set. Um, and, yeah, I think that's I think that's part of the part of the plan. Um, yeah, don't know when it's coming. Okay, uh, well, I think we're almost finished. I don't know if you have time for one more question or not, Ben, uh, or we can just uh, wind up your part of it um, now. Um, uh, ben? You... Yeah. Um, uh, have you got time for one little question more? I, I can do one question if there's, yes, yeah, there's a good question, yeah. Um, Michael, you you said there was a question from, um, uh, from, uh, there's a, from there's... YouTube. Yeah, and the question from YouTube is actually it's about cameras a bit. Um, so ob obviously a full frame camera for a lot of shots will always be superior image quality, but do you use a smaller point and shoot camera or just your phone? Um, and I guess that's that's quite relevant because that's the question. Do you end up using, uh, are you using your phone as a uh, as your camera as you're going along and also using it for navigating and stuff? Very rarely using my camera as my phone. I, I do, so I'm, if I'm rock climbing, and the weight of a full frame camera is just too much like above i don't know x grade uh yes i'll just use my iphone and nowadays an iphone is really very good and the batteries on a very modern iphone are so good that i'm not worried about taking photos draining the battery so i won't have a a, a map or whatever else that's so far not been an issue um but most of the time I do carry a big camera and have the phone as well separately. Okay. Um, well, thank you very much, uh, Ben, for talking us through how you, I, I still, I'm still amazed that you, you know, I'm going out with you and finding that I'm the only one carrying any papers. <laughs> I'm not sure whether to be embarrassed or just humbled. Anyway, thank you very much for, for taking time to, to, to do this. Um, there is going to be, there's the WhatsApp um, link somewhere up here. I think uh, the event host has, um, has uh, put it in. And if you, we will keep the, we'll keep the meeting open uh, for, uh, for a little while longer. If, it, if you want to ask questions to each other rather than to Ben. And what I suggest you do is you go on to gallery view and um, you either, just unmute yourself and, you know, it's a free for all. Um, and uh, we'll probably close, we'll probably close the whole thing in about 20 minutes. And if we can continue, if, if people are interested in this subject, uh, just please continue in the WhatsApp group afterwards. The whole point of this is to try to get a community of people talking. So thank you very much, Ben, and um, over to everybody else. Oh, before you do that, uh, could we, could, could I ask everybody to unmute just for a second to uh, show a sign of appreciation to Ben for taking the time to talk us through his um, paperless uh, mountaineering. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Ben. Thanks, Ben. Thanks, ben. Thanks, ben. Thanks, ben. Thanks, ben. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ben. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. Okay. All right. No, stop here. So, uh, free for all, anybody wants to try to ask any no question is too stupid so you know go ahead unmute yourself say something anybody
No. Sorry, quick to start the ball rolling. I asked a quick question. If anybody's used the latest generation of Garmin GPSs with multi channels, which are meant to overcome the problem of the echo effect from cliffs or if you're down a canyon. Uh, how, do, how do they? They're, they're multi channel so they use two signals from the same satellite. Uh, and so when you get the rebound of a GPS signal back to your phone, it causes a problem in accuracy, which is particularly relevant if you're near cliffs. And this I, I, no, this one again. It's, all, so it's all completely over my head. It's completely new to me, Gus. Well, I wasn't asking you, Victor. I was asking if anybody else to do something. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I mean, I, I my, my quite old G GPS does have some kind of multi-channel but i don't think it i it don't think it's a rake receiver but it was supposed to do that and it, it was much better than the other one that i used before that it's only the last two or three years they've come out they've released the second channel you get different satellites and you get different systems but this actually uses two um there's about three or four different channels yeah oh, oh i think i'm sorry and You're talking also it, about yeah. one that goes off um, the Galileo and the other. No, we, uh, we, we, the, we, there we, are other we, constellations we, separate from the American GPS, yeah, and we, that does help. Um, and you'll find that quite a few reasonably modern phones use those those as well, and those reasonably modern phones definitely have situations where they work better. Um, where your other, where your phone wouldn't work otherwise, so they just link them all together, and that is actually noticeably better. Yeah. So the multi GNSS um, systems give you an improved accuracy relative to just using a single system like GPS. If you're using GPS plus Galileo or GPS plus GLONASS, the multi band devices where they're using the L1 and L5 bands from the single satellite. Do improve the accuracy, but I have a um, a GPS map sixty six, which generally gives me two to three meters, ninety five percent accuracy. And people have said who've upgraded to the multi band version of the same device say that improves up to maybe a meter. So the difference in your ninety five percent accuracy isn't that huge. But I've yet to see a review of anybody using that. Uh, in cliff type environments or, or deep slot canyons where you've still only got a reduced view of the sky with a small number of satellites to see whether that improves the accuracy. It certainly does in, you know, normal sort of valleys, apparently, but um, not, not sure about climbing scenarios. I, I have seen a review, but it was somebody who was basically uh, an ambassador for Garmin. So that's why I was asking if anybody else has got it, any experience. Yeah, there's a German review site that certainly was quite enthusiastic about the improvement in terms of you know tracking generally on mountain hikes, but this wasn't a mountaineering scenario. So I don't know, you know, in cliffs for next to cliffs, for example, where you get those reflection errors. Yeah. Okay, good. Thanks for that. But, um, yeah, phones are coming that way as well. And uh, I think a GPS chip for the current phone is less than a dollar. So the multi-band ones will very soon catch up with that and we'll all be getting, you know, one meter accuracy 95% um, of the time, as opposed to, you know, eight meters, which is what you get off a phone right now, generally. Hmm. One other thing That's... I'd also add, um, Victor was talking about using um, mapping in Nepal, that there's a website that has all the one to 50 and all the one to 25,000 topo maps of Nepal, which were produced, I think, by the Finns on behalf of the Nepal government. And you can download those sheet by sheet and then you can geo reference them or calibrate them, if you like, either in Google Earth or in a program called um, MapC to MapC. And then you can convert them for use on store them on your device and you can in principle do that with any paper topo map if you've got a scan of it um can you put a link to all of that in the chat box <laughs> i'll try and do that <laughs> or, or 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 even better still if you could put that on the uh, whatsapp group afterwards that would be really great some links to that and um 
okay. maybe how, how to do that. It's uh -huh. all completely, you know, I'm, I'm still Next, there yeah. with my piece of, so keen to improve, keen yeah. to learn from you guys. Anything else, anybody? I'd also mention an app that hasn't come up so far, which is really um, an integrated app that has, I think, four different satellite sets of images, uh, all the open street map type maps, plus topo maps from UK, Switzerland, not, um, France, et cetera, et cetera. And that's called Nakarta, uh -huh. N-A-K-R-T-E. And you can oh, effort yeah. effortlessly switch between different maps and um, look at the satellite imaging into one click and you've got you know a variety of open street map maps or um, topo maps if those are available. And I find that very useful. Is um, that spelt like, is it spelt M-A-C-A-R-T-A, -A -A, did you say? N for Nigel, uh, Nakarta. It's a Russian app, N-A-K-R-T-E. Oh, M-A-K-I. Yeah, N A K R T E. Oh, and when okay. you go onto it, it'll probably take you to the center of Moscow as the opening page, and you've then got to go to the settings top right and choose your maps. M M or N to start N. with. November N for November. Okay, no November Alpha Kilo Alpha. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah, with, Romeo, an, with an echo. Tango, does it echo. does it end echo at the end? Yes. Okay, very good. Oh, and it's yeah, pretty thank intuitive. You. Thank you, Sue and Lindsay. Great, yeah. Plotting. Yeah. great. well, I, I know nothing about any of that, so that's great. Um, super. Right, uh, well, if no more questions, we can go off and have our beer and glass of wine and whatever. So thank you everybody, everybody very much for being on this. Um, next week, uh, we have uh, Lindsay Griffin and... Um, uh, Alex Buis and I don't know a couple of other people talking about um, the paper side of things. Um, it'll probably be um, well. They're both Alex Alex Buis and Lindsay are pretty bloody good authors. This is Alex Buis's most recent thing, Sham uh, Mont Blanc Lines. So fantastic book. It's um, almost almost as good as Ben's book, which I think is fantastic. Um, and I guess that we'll be having more of a conversation about um, uh, topos and 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 books that way, and and keeping information up to date in the uh, in the age of uh, climate change. But we'll see. Uh, the conversation is going to be as much to do with you guys as to, as with the presentation. So thank you very much, everybody, and see you next week. Thanks, Victor. That was great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.